all, welcome to Tala Talks NICU. I'm Dr. Tala, and as I've already told you all, I'm extremely proud of the fact that I've learned how to screen record on my computer. And because of that, I can now go over x-rays in a way that will actually be helpful for you. By the time you finish watching this video, you'll have a really good idea about what common respiratory diagnoses look like on chest x-rays. We'll go over the patterns you should be looking for with TTN, RDS, meconium aspiration syndrome, BPD, and pneumonia. So watch closely, and by the end, you'll feel so much more comfortable reading these x-rays. You know I always say this, but we already filmed a video on the basics of how to read x-rays, so if you haven't seen it yet, we highly recommend you start there. Or we could just start immediately. So the first x-rays we'll cover are TTN, which, as you all know, stands for transient tachypnea of the newborn. This is mostly a disease of term and late preterm infants, especially if they've been born by C-section and haven't gone through any labor. As you know, infants' lungs are filled with fluid during pregnancy. After a baby is born, if the infant hasn't managed to get rid of this lung fluid, then the lungs appear really wet. As you know, the disease is transient, so you just have to support the baby through the first one to three days of life. So for example, the history on this x-ray may be a 40-week baby delivered by repeat C-section, who starts grunting, you admit the baby to the NICU and you get an x-ray and you see this. So let's go through it. What do you notice first? First of all, the lungs seem to be fairly well expanded or even maybe hyper expanded. So let's count the ribs. So here is kind of really half a rib and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so kind of nine and a half ribs expanded, not collapsed by any means, because again, these lungs are usually normally made. They're not premature or abnormal. They're just filled with fluid. So sometimes the lungs are overexpanded as the infant is trying to compensate by breathing harder and deeper to try to help get rid of that fluid. So let's move on to another chest x-ray with TTN which again shows the lungs to be well expanded. What else? You can see the whole x-ray looks a little wet. There's white streaking all over. Again, this is the fluid. You can see this most prominently at the hilum, which is where the bronchi and the vessels kind of come out from. Here, you can see prominent vascular markings in what is called a sunburst pattern. So can you kind of see the rays of like the sunburst originating at the hilum? The other finding that you can see here really clearly is fluid between the lung lobes, or what we call fluid in the fissure. We see this mostly between the right upper lobe and the right middle lobe, as you see here. Just as an aside, I want to remind you that the left lung has two lobes and the right has three, which may explain why we see the fluid in this fissure. Other findings you might see in TTN are a slightly generously sized heart, again, because of the excess fluid, and likely the heart is kind of trying to help absorb that fluid. Here, it's a pretty normal sized heart. And you may also see pleural effusions, which we don't really see here. We can't really see those. The x-ray on the right, this one, is the same patient 18 hours later. You can already see that the marked improvement of streaky densities in both lungs. Another aside is this infant is actually intubated. And honestly, you very rarely need to intubate an infant because of TTN. So most likely this infant had something else going on in addition to the TTN, like HIE or something. Right, our final x-ray of TTN. Let's put all our knowledge about TTN together and let's list what we see. So number one, we see the well-expanded lungs or even the hyper-expanded lungs. So let's count the ribs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ribs expanded, so well-expanded lungs, the general wetness all over, but especially with a sunburst pattern of excess fluid coming from the hilum. And then you can also see here the fluid in the fissure. So really, all the classic attributes of TTN, 
The last thing I want to say about this x-ray is that you can notice that it is actually rotated and I know you know this because you saw the first video, but look how much longer the ribs appear on this right side, the right side of the patient, as compared to the left side. So as soon as you see ribs that are much longer on one side than the other, you know that the baby is rotated. Let's move on to RDS or respiratory distress syndrome. This is also called hyaline membrane disease. RDS or HMD is a disease of immature lungs which are lacking surfactant. And honestly, it's one of the most common diagnoses in the NICU and therefore probably one of the most common x-rays that you'll see. So get used to reading these x-rays. As you all know, surfactant helps open up the lungs. So if lungs are lacking surfactant, then those lungs are more likely to collapse. So these lungs look really white because the alveoli, the little air sacs, are all collapsed. This is different from TTN, if you remember, where the x-ray in TTN looked whiter because of the excess fluid. As you would expect, if enough of the alveoli are collapsed, then the whole lungs will be collapsed or hypoinflated. So often on x-rays, you'll see that these lungs are hypoexpanded, maybe five, six, seven ribs. Let's count the ribs here. If you count them, you actually reach about eight ribs here for whatever it's worth, given that this is pretty much a whiteout. But there is an important point I want to make here. Remember that the expansion of the lungs on the x-ray aren't just going to depend on the intrinsic lung disease. They're also going to depend on how much support the baby is on. So if you have this baby on an oscillator or whatever with extremely high pressures, then the lungs are probably not going to be extremely hypo expanded. Here we don't see an endotracheal tube, so maybe this baby is on CPAP, on like really high pressures on CPAP, and that's why we can see kind of the edge of the diaphragm down here and not kind of up here. The other big clue that tells us that this is RDS is the presence of air bronchograms. Air bronchograms are where you see the air-filled bronchi, so here, the respiratory tubes, prominently against the white collapsed lung. So basically you can trace the bronchial tree throughout the x-rays. So air bronchograms are pretty much pathognomonic of RDS. Okay, so still on RDS, let's put all of those findings together. So look at this x-ray here on the left. So one, you have general whiteness or haziness of the collapsed granular lungs. In RDS, we often refer to this as looking like a ground glass. So they say ground glass appearance, which is kind of like a frosted glass. So that was one, the overall ground glass or hazy appearance. Two, we have hypoinflation of the lungs, so kind of really collapsed lungs. And here you can really see that. So maybe one, two, three, four, five, six ribs. So very hypoinflated lungs. And then here again, we can see the air bronchogram. So you can kind of trace that bronchial tree against all the whiteness. So can you all guess what was done here before the second x-ray was taken? Exactly. The baby was intubated here. You don't uh, see, is that the endotracheal tube right there? I think that's the OG tube. But here, obviously, the baby was uh, intubated and then surfactant was actually given here. So immediately, you see clearing of some of those kind of opacities and the overall whiteness. After the surfactant treatment, it's slightly better expanded and also slightly less white. Now look at this group of slides of the same patient. It shows a very common progression of what may happen in infants with respiratory distress syndrome. So in this first chest x-ray after birth, you see the three features of RDS, the small lungs. I mean, honestly, I don't even know where the diaphragm is here, but which are basically two whited out and these faint kind of air bronchograms, all consistent with very severe RDS. After this x-ray, the baby was intubated and given surfactant. In these follow-up x-rays, we can see some bad after effects of really bad RDS. So we can see pulmonary interstitial emphysema, as well as a pneumomediastinum and a right-sided pneumothorax. We'll talk about PIE in the next video, but basically this happens in really bad RDS when the alveoli rupture and air escapes to outside the air sacs. It looks kind of bubbly in appearance, and you can kind of see that here. As you can imagine, once air has escaped from an alveoli, then there's also an increased chance of that air collecting in other spaces, like around the pneumomediastinum, which is what you see here, a pneumomediastinum, which is where you have air here around the bottom aspect of the thymus. 
And in D, this air is actually collected around the lungs themselves, and this has resulted in a pneumothorax. So what I want you to take away from this is that RDS is bad in itself, but it also increases the risk of air leak syndromes like PIE, pneumomediastinum, and pneumothorax. Now let's move on to meconium aspiration syndrome, or what we call MAS. Again, MAS is mostly a disease of term or post-term babies, and it happens when babies get stressed in utero, which means that they lack oxygen in utero, and as a result of the stress, they pass meconium in utero. If they're even more stressed, then they'll gasp and inhale this meconium. Meconium is a horrible, sticky substance that can have a lot of bad effects on the lungs, as you all know from working in the unit. If you haven't seen it, we highly recommend you go watch the video we made on MAS so you fully understand it. But in summary, MAS can have lots of different horrible effects on the lungs, so there's lots of different types of x-ray changes. The most obvious would be little bits of meconium just stuck throughout the lungs. This looks like kind of patchy infiltrates all over. And we can see this in this x-ray. Can you see how there are little white areas all over? This looks different from TTN or RDS, which is more kind of a homogenous whiteness throughout. Here it's not consistent, it's more patchy and intermittent. Sometimes the little bits of meconium can completely block off airways, so this can cause collapse and areas of atelectasis. So that's kind of happening down here where it's kind of whiter. Then in other areas, the meconium lets air in during inspiration and then won't allow air out during in expiration. So what happens is more and more air collects in the alveoli. This results in areas of hyper expansion, and you can kind of see this in this x-ray here. This area seems to be better expanded than the others. If areas of hyperexpansion get really bad, so the air just kind of keeps building up, then eventually the alveoli will pop. And again here, just like with the RDS, you can end up with a pneumothorax. Let's look at another chest x-ray with MAS. So again, here you see these just kind of patchy infiltrates all over. This area really all over here seems to be more collapsed and this left side, especially down here, seems to be more aerated. The other thing that you need to know about uh, meconium aspiration syndrome is that the meconium itself can really irritate the lungs and cause a chemical pneumonitis. So sometimes you can have just this kind of overall haziness just from that. In neither of the last two x-rays can you see a pneumothorax. And obviously you can't really tell if PPHN has developed from just looking at x-rays. That's more of a clinical diagnosis. Sometimes you do see the blackness of the lungs, but obviously you're not gonna see that if there's patchy infiltrates all over. As you all know, pneumothorax as well as PPHN are the two things that we really do worry about in MAS. Now let's talk about BPD or bronchopulmonary dysplasia, which is the chronic lung disease of prematurity. As a reminder, BPD is kind of a clinical diagnosis and it's when you still have oxygen need at 36 weeks. BPD is a disease we created because these premature babies live long enough to get BPD. If babies are very premature, then we have to do whatever we can to their lungs to get their oxygen into their bodies. So often we have to bang up their lungs to allow the babies to survive. The constant trauma to the lungs, especially if this is coupled with inadequate nutrition and a PDA and infections, results in BPD. The alveoli all get damaged and in the process of repair there can be fibrosis or scarring around the alveoli. Sometimes the alveoli are completely obliterated, so you can have areas of collapse and in other cases they aren't properly formed and we end up with kind of cystic areas in the lungs. Often, these lungs look hazy and you'll see like fibrosis, atelactasis, a, a cobblestone appearance, kind of due to the uneven lung aeration. So again, look at this chest x-ray. Clearly, it looks like an older x preemie. We have the PDA clip in place and what looks like, I mean, this is a really thick tube, so probably like an ND tube, like a du duodenal tube, they're trying to do transpyloric feeding or something. Not intubated though. And then you can see all the chronic changes. This looks like this kind of cobblestone appearance, like thick scarred bubbles. It's also called a honeycomb appearance, again, because of this weird bubbly pattern. Then again here, you have kind of areas of collapse, 
or just white out. And then up here, you have these areas of hyperinflation. Look at another x-ray with BPD. This infant is still intubated, so this must be a really pretty severe BPD. And again, you can see this just kind of scarred appearance all over. You see areas that look like collapse, kind of down here and up here, and also areas of hyperexpansion, so over here. Overall, these lungs are well expanded. This doesn't necessarily mean that the lungs are healthy. Rather, it could be that these babies with BPD aren't actually good at exhaling the air and the air just kind of gets trapped in the lungs. Also, the lungs themselves, as you would expect with that amount of scarring, are just much stiffer, so less compliant. So it's not like they're moving air in and out very easily. This series of x-rays shows a progression in a premature baby from RDS all the way to BPD. So this kind of is over a few weeks to a couple of months. So initially you can see the white hypoinflated lungs with the air bronchograms. So as you all know now, this is consistent with severe RDS. Again here, I can't even tell where the diaphragm is. I don't know how expanded this is. Then these x-rays are taken on follow-up and show kind of the progressive development of BPD. So here, initially you're seeing kind of like a little bit of edema until eventually it results in this hyperinflated kind of bubbly or cystic lungs. This last x-ray was taken about two months after this first one. And here you can start to see this irregular kind of scar-like densities with cystic areas. Over here, you have atelectasis, so this kind of whiteout. And then here you have this kind of like cystic area of hyperexpansion. So here the alveoli weren't made correctly at all. The endotracheal tube is actually still here, which represents a prolonged need for oxygen or like really severe BPD. Now let's go over pneumonia. And the reason why I wanted to leave pneumonia to the end is to make the point that pneumonia can literally look like anything on a chest x-ray. It's not like in older kids or adults where they usually get kind of like a lobe pneumonia where one lobe of the lung looks white and collapse. In babies, it can look like MAS, it can look like TTN, it can look like RDS, like it does here, like literally anything. And so often you're really making the diagnosis of pneumonia based on clinical appearance and not just the chest x-ray. Obviously you should see some x-ray abnormalities, it just may be very non-specific. If the baby is acting septic but the x-ray looks like TTN, then it may be pneumonia. If the chest x-ray improves though in one day, then this is much more likely to have been TTN rather than pneumonia. Pneumonia is probably gonna take a few more days to completely clear up the x-ray. In this x-ray, you can see just how much this looks like RDS. It's kind of got that ground glass, hazy appearance, not well expanded lungs, and you can even see these air bronchograms. So you could just look at this and be like, yep, this looks just like RDS, but in this patient, it was actually a pneumonia. Now, because there's never a never in medicine, also realize that sometimes a pneumonia can look like a classic pneumonia in older children and adults. And that's just what we have here, a classic right upper lobe pneumonia. But overall, just to say it again, a septic looking infant with any new x-ray changes, especially if they have copious secretions, assume it's a pneumonia until proven otherwise. And that's it. We do have more of these videos to follow, more on abnormal chest x-rays and KUBs, and then we have one on line and ET2 placement and kind of just seeing where everything is or is not in the correct position. So if you did like this video, then please like it below and remember to subscribe if you're interested in neonatal contact. Thanks again so much for being here.